the last thing that we've got to do is create our clasp to keep the locket closed. And to do this, we're going to use another piece of 0.8mm sterling silver wire, which will go through this piece of tube and then we will move it up to create um, a hook that goes over the top here. So I'll show you how to do that. So we're just going to feed the wire through the tube. Make sure that you get it about to the center of the wire. And then we can pull this side up into a, a U shape. And we'll hold that. And then we'll just push the other side up as well. So what we're wanting to do here is curve the wire upwards, but also slightly curve it round over the shape of the locket. So we'll pull that round a little bit more. Okay, and we'll curve that round. We'll just push these back. Because the wire is so narrow, it's quite easy to push back. And then what I'm going to do is use a pair of round nose pliers to just push these sides together slightly, just so that we get a better shaped clasp. The reason I'm using round nose is because they've got narrower tips, so they're easier to get in at this point. So again, I'm using a pair of parallel pliers just because I find them easier. They put even pressure onto both pieces at once. And we just push those in a little. Okay. So you can see from the side that that's curved over the shape of the dome. And again, on this side, you can see that's curved over. What I'm going to do now is just mark where they cross here and then I'm just going to solder those two pieces of wire together. So let's just make a mark here where they're crossing over. And then I can open this out and we can let the locket kind of open up and hang. And then what I'm going to do is just use my cutters to just cut where we marked. So go in. The reason that I marked it is because sometimes when you're opening this up to cut them, the wires do actually move. On this occasion, they haven't, so that's great. But we'll do that, we'll just cut that. I'll trim that one back as well. Okay. Now what I want to do is just manipulate these ends so that they're going to be together. So I'm just going to trim this bottom one a little bit more so that it will drop, this will drop down so we can get a nice flush seam. So again, just using my cutters. I'm trying to use the cutters so that I'm always getting a flat cut. So that's why I'm coming in with them this way round. If I use them this way round, I'm gonna get a little point on here and that will make it more tricky to solder. So we'll just nudge this back. Just move this little bit of wire out of the way, there we go. I'll we'll just come in and trim that piece. Okay, I'm just going to bring those ends back together and just wiggle them together. You should just be able to do it with your fingers because this wire is quite easy to manipulate. If you do need to move it so that you've got a better flush edge for soldering, you can just come in and use a pair of pliers. Let's just move that in. Okay, 
and that should be fine. So what we'll do now is just quickly set this up to solder. And again, I'm just going to use some easy solder to just solder that join. So I'm just going to heat this up really gently, just towards the end of the wire. Put a little bit of flux in. And then I'm going to add a piece of easy solder. I'm just concentrating on the end of the wire. And that should solder really quickly. In fact, that's already flowed in one place as I was putting it down. There we go. So you saw how quickly that solders. You want to make sure that you concentrate the heat right on the end of the wire here. If you start to move the flame across here, you run the risk of the tube slipping. So there we go. We can just pop that in the pickle to clean up all of the flux. And then I'll show you the finished piece. Our locket is pretty much finished now. Because we've put this stamp texture on the front, what I'm going to do is actually patina the whole piece and then buff it back. And what that'll do is make these textures really, really pop. So you'll really see those little stars and that pattern. Now to apply the patina, what I'm actually using is a watercolor brush. And I filled the reservoir with platinal oxidizing solution. So this is the platinal. So this gives a really dark finish on sterling silver um, and you can also use it on copper. I prefer this to liver of sulfur for a couple of reasons. One is that it doesn't smell anywhere near as bad as liver of sulfur. And two, it really does give a nice dark finish. Liver of sulfur is brilliant if you want to try and get some colors, but this will give you a really, really dark finish on the piece. I use it in a watercolour brush because it just gives a little bit more control on where you want to place it on the piece. Instead of having to dip the whole piece, you can just paint this on. So we just squeeze the reservoir a little and we'll see that that just starts to come out. And you'll see that immediately starts to darken our piece. We'll just get it all into more of a little recesses that we've stamped. The nice thing about this as well, you don't have to have the piece warm and you don't have to warm the solution. Whereas with liver of sulfur, it works a lot better once it's warmed up. The unfortunate side effect of that is it makes it smell even worse. So any of you that have worked with liver of sulfur before will know that awful rotten egg smell that it gives off. Whereas Platinol doesn't do that. I'm going to go and do the back as well. We will be buffing this all back as well, so don't worry that it's leaving slight marks. And we'll just do the little tube for the clasp. I'm going to go ahead and darken up the silver for the clasp as well. And I'll just do the jump ring just to make it all look pretty uniform. So I'm going to leave that to dry for a few minutes. It doesn't take that long. Uh, it just dries off nicely. And then what we'll do is come back in and buff that off and then we'll get to see the final piece. Now the platinol's dry, what we can do is buff this back. So we'll take off quite a lot of this patina and we'll leave it in the stamped pattern. To do this, I'm going to use a scrubby mop. So this is just a green, scrubby in a pendant motor. This feels a little bit like the scouring pads that we'd use 
for pans, but it's a slightly gentler finish. And this is really good for taking the patina back, but leaving it into the um, imprint that you've made with the metal stamps. So we'll just start doing that. You can see this just starts taking off the majority of the patina, but it leaves it in the imprint. It also leaves quite a nice satin finish to the piece. Just keep moving this around to make sure that we've got all of the patina out that we want to. Obviously you can take off as much or as little as you would like absolutely depends on the look that you prefer. I want to leave some nice high points of silver so I'm going to keep going over this until I've got it back to the colour that I want it. Just be a bit careful using the pendant motor that you don't flick it across your workshop. just get into all of those little nooks and crannies. Give that a nice textured and oxidised finish. Just get a little bit more here. I'm just going to open this up and clean up the inside just because a little bit of the platinol ran to the inside. Again, if you wanted the entire piece to be oxidised, you could have oxidised the inside of this and then just scrub that back a little bit. give the inside of this section of the locket a quick going over with the scrubby and that will give it a nice texture on the inside. Okay. So you can see that leaves it with a slightly textured finish. I can see that there's still some platinol just underneath the rim of this locket. So what I'm going to do is change this over for a radial wheel and then I'll be able to get in underneath that lip and get that cleaned up. So this is a radial wheel, um, sometimes also called a spider wheel. It's got lots of little legs on it like a spider and it's got a grit to it so it will take off some of that patina and because of the shape of it it will get underneath this rim here. So we can get right in underneath there and you can see that that's taking out that patina from underneath that edge. You can use it again over the top. Again these radial wheels will leave a really nice satin finish to your piece. So if you don't want a high shine they're ideal to use. Just make sure that's nice and cleaned up. Yeah, that's looking good. We'll just quickly check the other side. And just run this round. 
just to get into all those little recesses. The one thing you just need to be a bit careful with, especially when you're working on a domed piece, is that you're not tilting your handpiece too far forward because you run the risk then of hitting your metal with the metal part of the mandrel and that'll leave scratches, quite deep scratches into your piece. So just be a bit mindful of the angles you're going in at. And there we go. So we've buffed off the patina. We've left a nice satin finish or matte finish on the front. We can still see that there's the patina in the stars and the little moon. So that really shows up that pattern that we've created. And we can just pop the catch forward for it to just click into place. And that then holds the locket closed.